How you guys doing? Has this been fun so far? Yeah. Special day. I know, I know for Gavin and I both, I think for you guys, special to come here, right, and be able to take BP, but this is special for us, huh? to, to be able to give back to you guys who we are so thankful to, so thankful for everything you guys have done and do for us and our country. So thank you guys. I know it's special for you, but thank you from the bottom of both of our hearts. And we both have, uh, you know, looking back to the family tree, servicemen, your great-grandfather paid the ultimate sacrifice in World War II. Yeah, he was um, an officer in World War II, um, served the whole, whole World War II. Um, it was like a couple weeks, you know, he's getting ready to go home and his officer tent actually got bombed. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, you know, but I've seen it firsthand. So, I mean, you guys are the real heroes here. And allow us to, you know, be able to do what we love to do at the end of the day. So, no, special thanks to you guys. Grandfather was in Vietnam, my yeah. grandfather was in World War II. Um, so, yeah, and I think that everybody can, can find something like that, some connection to, to make it uh, real for us, but you guys obviously on a whole other level that, that we just can't even fathom. And again, we can't say thank you enough, but we want to talk some baseball too. Uh, you guys know this guy, but like looking back, man, so you were in high school in 2016. Were you a 2016 high school graduate? 2016. Yeah, 2016 yeah. high school graduate. 2019, you're playing at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> I mean, what was that like the first time you stepped out there? I mean, yeah, I couldn't, on my debut day, I couldn't eat, didn't sleep at all, you know, like, I'm just trying to find a way to stay as calm as possible, but, yeah, I mean, I stepped out there, and then, you know, there's 50,000 people, whatever it is, and it was very surreal, you know, you kind of, you dream about that your whole life, and I was, yeah, it was a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions. Obviously not the finish that any of us wanted. Uh, how much time did you spend kind of taking that in and letting yourself reset before getting back to work? Uh, about 12 days of doing absolutely nothing, <laughs> you know, trying to mental reset and physically reset, and I got bored and I started to get the itch again, so uh, started working out, and, and whether it's lighter or harder, you know, um, but just trying to get after it and, you know, figure it out for 2020. You know. it sounds like more often than not, it's not very light, your workouts. Brandon McDaniel, the strength and conditioning coach. So both him and then right before we came in here, Kenley Jansen was back in there getting a workout in, and he came in huffing and puffing, saying the same thing. You guys are getting your tails kicked, huh? Yeah, he's crushing us. But, <laughs> hey, it's, you know, it's for next year, you know. Exactly. trying to win a championship. That's what you got to do, you know. Yeah. He, right? Uh, these men and women know a little something about working out, changing your body, maximizing your body. You were 165 when you got drafted, is that right? Yep, 165. And you're what now? 205. How'd you put on 40 pounds? Just, yeah. I think. Tacos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the tacos, yeah. Uh, the taco trucks. Um, I think just the maturation process, you know, I was 18 and now I'm about to be 22 coming up this month. Um, yeah. That and then just, you know, working out and, and eating as good as possible as much as you can and uh, just kind of combining all that together and, you know, 40 pounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. 40 pounds. It's like a, you added a small person to your friend. Yeah, I was tiny. I was tiny. I was tiny. <laughs> and with that, you have added pop, right? I mean, the power is coming. I know it's not just adding the size. There were other changes you made. But talk about just your evolution as a, as a hitter specifically over your pro career. Yeah, I think when I first got drafted, uh, I was big into just hitting for average and just trying to get on base, you know, singles, walks, whatever it was. And the way kind of baseball is going now is you got to hit for power. And... Uh, I kind of made that adjustment in 2018 with Rob, our hitting coach here, and um, just trying to get as much power out of your body and as efficiently as possible. And there's a lot that goes into that, obviously, and uh, a lot of mechanical stuff. But uh, that was kind of the big thing for me was getting the most out of my lower half and um, going from there. So I see uh, some some young baseball players, softball players in here. I would think. This is a great place to grow up and be a baseball or softball player. You can play year-round, gorgeous weather. Gavin here didn't quite have that luxury. He grew up in the baseball factory that is Wisconsin. Huh? I heard a Go Pack over here. <coughs> I'm a Bears fan. He's a Bears fan. What, what was that like growing up as a baseball player in Wisconsin? Um, a lot of indoor stuff, obviously, you know, it, it starts snowing, it was, there was six inches of snow on Halloween, 
so that, you know, not ideal, but a lot of indoor stuff, cage stuff, you know, trying to do everything you can and keep up with, you know, people out here where they're playing year round, and I didn't have that, you know, opportunity to do that, so I did a lot of stuff indoors, and, you know, you just kind of find a way to make things work. What would you say to some of the, the youngsters in the room that may have aspirations of doing what you're doing? Yeah, to have fun, man. Try to do something to get better every day. Um, whether it's you know throwing a ball off the wall to yourself. I crushed wall ball as a kid, and um, yeah, whether you know it's hitting every day or lifting every day, doing something. So we want to make sure that you guys get to ask Gavin some questions too. We have some microphones over here. I plead the fifth. Hopefully, me though. I'm working towards it. He's got plenty of that, I assure you. So the whole month of September, October, I was in the Westin downtown. Uh, so I was in the hotel the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of that stuff that, that folks don't think of, and I'm sure ball players don't even think of until they're actually in it, right? You know, they, you, you, we see from seven to ten each night in the nine innings, but there's a whole lot more being a real person, like getting out of plane and getting out here and finding places to live. Very easy question. Derek Jeter for me. Like, just the way he went about his business and um, his character and how he played, for me, it was like, that's who I want to try to be as, you know, as much as possible. So. Were you a Yankees fan because of him? Or no, I kind of was the same way with that. We were talking about right. the NBA earlier. Um, I didn't really cheer for a team. It was always players, you know, like Derek Jeter and Robinson Cano, and it just happened to be they both played for the Yankees. But those were my two favorite players. Yeah, it was a complete whirlwind for me. Um, you know, you go from playing in front of 5,000 people OKC to 60,000 here, and it was, you know, it was a lot of fun, a lot of very intense, you know, and I think just getting my feet wet last year is, you know, prepares me a lot for what to expect next year, and I think that can only help, you know. So I usually get up, um, grab a coffee from Starbucks at like 8 o'clock. I need coffee to get me going. What's your order? Uh, I always get a sweet vanilla cream cold brew with espresso in there. I need the espresso. Nice. Um, so I get the coffee. I drive over here around, get here at 8.45, 9-ish. Um, they have a chef, um, Tyrone, who's the man. So I eat here, um, do some stuff in the training room for some mobility before I lift, go downstairs, work out with Brandon McDaniel. That's usually 10 to 11.30ish, um, and then I'll, I'll hit, I'm not hitting yet, and then I'll hit usually after I work out, and that's pretty much my day. In the workout, you know, there's conditioning involved and stretching, you know, mobility stuff, so uh, that's kind of how it's rolling right now. How about in season, Gavin? What's a typical home game day look like? In season, it's long days, yeah. Get here at like 12.30ish, um, eat, stretch, you know, go through if you need to lift, lift. Um, and that's, you know, you have meetings to go over the opposing pitchers and uh, the hitters and who you can steal bases off of. And you go watch video on the guys, see how you can pick up things, certain things off of them. And then usually you go, you do your defense work, BP, 334. And then, you know, you just kind of relax and eat or do whatever you got to do to, to get ready for 7 o'clock. So. Um, I kill video games to, you know, pass some time, video games, and, um, uh, Call of Duty, Fortnite, uh, 2K, uh, I kind of do it all. That's the main thing where I, you know, especially when I'm back home and it's freezing and you can't really do anything outside, I, I just sit inside and I, I, I kill video games. So that's kind of, you know, keeps me out of trouble. Yeah, I played basketball my whole life up until my senior year. I was afraid I was going to get hurt, and I didn't want to like blow my knee out or anything. But it was bad. I honestly might have had more fun playing basketball than baseball growing up, and it just turns out, you know, baseball went a little bit in a better direction than basketball. But I love basketball, man. Um, a lot of training room stuff. So our trainers do a great job at. You know, whatever you need, whether it's stretching you out or deep tissue stuff, or you know, there's a 
lot of a lot of stuff that, that they can do. Um, stuff in the in the weight room also, preventative lifts and stuff that you know to try to build you up for 162 games plus the postseason. It's a lot. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of preventative lifting and, and training room stuff that they kill for us. <laughs> I try to be like 80% organic food, um, so that's kind of my healthy stuff, and it's usually I get the protein, the carbohydrates, and the vegetables and everything, so it's mainly steak, rice, broccoli. Um, my cheat meal, though, it's I crush in and out So if you say you like Whataburger better than In-N-Out, In-N-Out, you're a liar. Um, so In-N-Out is usually my cheat meal. I get the double-doubles and the style, so I crush that. <laughs> Still uh, trying to find an off season, so I go right into football and uh, basketball, and before basketball is done, spring training starts. So it's kind of never ended. <laughs> it beats working though. I am very very lucky. Can I plead the fifth the way uh, he did when when he uh, was asked about who's going to start at second base? The, hum the, the humbleness, the humbleness. <laughs> We're both Midwest guys, you know, aren't Midwest guys supposed to have like this humble nature to them? Yeah. We have a couple really good mental strength coaches and one Eric Potter at, he actually did a lot of mental training stuff with the Navy SEALs. So for me, I think that's, that's unbelievable. You know, those, those are some bad, you know what, you know. So for me, uh, when I can pick their brain as much as possible, and obviously, you know, the Navy SEAL stuff, that is way more rigorous mentally than what I deal with. So, I mean, when I can pick his brain, which I do as much as possible, whether it's visualization, um, you know, I feel like I'm a little unconfident right now. What can I do? Um, there's like three or four strength or mental strength coaches that they're always open, phone calls, whatever you need. So that's helped me a ton. He mentioned one of them. That's like his foundation. That was, that was what he did before he came to the Dodgers. He was a Navy SEAL mental trainer. This is unbelievable, right? Yeah, that blows my mind. Um, it was either 81 or 48. So I was like, okay, 81, that's, you know. We'll it looks like I haven't even made the team yet. <laughs> right, so I was like, I'll go 48, you know. <laughs> what was your number growing up? 24. Okay, 24. Yeah. Yeah, pretty emotional. Uh, my family made a ton of sacrifices, and I actually had some family in, in Baltimore where I hit it. Um, so there was a lot of sacrifices they made for me, time, money, um, everything, you know, support. So for me it was more for them, you know, and, and it was cool to be able to do that in front of them. Because uh, obviously they made a ton of sacrifices for me to help me be where I am. So, What did you do with the ball? I still have it. It's in a, I gave it to my pops, uh -huh. um, so he's got it in his room. Awesome. Well, yeah. Didn't you hit your first home run the night you guys clinched? It was the same night we clinched. What a day, yeah. huh? It was a good day. It was fun. Um, probably right around when I was 10 or 11, um, maybe 12, but it was more when I got closer to high school where it turned more in from a hobby to like, this is something I really want to do and, and you know, pursue. So I would say right around like super serious, 13, 14. Yep. All right, guys. Let's put our hands together for this one here. Yeah, the Thank you guys. Oh, you guys. A round of applause for you guys. Thank you.